Welcome wrestling fans, it is Wrestling Revolution Keaton here. I say this every time. Uh, I always say a man who needs no introductions, but this man is a literal living wrestling legend. A British living wrestling legend. Six time lightweight champion. Seven. Seven time lightweight champion. Morty Jones. How are you Keaton? I'm good, how are you? I can see you going into television when you get older. Is that what you want to do? Wrestling. Wrestling. Well, I started at your age. I started when I was six years of age. And I've been in it ever since. And I've seen the world. And, you know, any country I've been there. I was in Mexico when I was 17. Then I went to Japan. All over the place. The guy called Billy Robinson, you won't remember him, but he's a good... Who? Is he the one that trained Tina Basley? There's a... She went to his seminars. Oh, I know who he is. Yeah, well, Billy Robinson never trained anybody professional. Oh. He taught me amateur wrestling, like that, the Olympic wrestling. But it was a, he was a great professional, but he, he, wanted, he, didn't, he didn't like anybody talking about professional wrestling in the amateur gym. But who's your favourite person you faced? Who's a favourite? Yeah. Too many. I mean, when you when I was in Japan, I was tagging with Andrew the Giant. I was a young lad and he was a big guy. He was 45, 45 stone, but I met Muhammad Ali. Did you? When he was in, yeah, but I was there, when he was there doing the, he actually, he did a wrestling versus boxer. Right. Antonio Noki was a big god in Japan. Oh, I know him. He's the one that died not that long ago. Correct. Correct, yeah. yeah, you clued up, you clued up, and I wrestled him a few times in Fujinami and Fujiwara. That Japanese style was good for me. I had six trips there, but I was on, always the young lad type of thing, uh, which was a great experience. I mean, I was with Jake the Snake Roberts. I know him as well from WWF. Yeah. From WWF. Yeah, and you know, these were all great wrestlers. And I was pleased when um, Vince McMahon's father, that had been the, his granddad type of thing, we was in Japan and he asked me to stop on. But it's the first time that the American wrestlers went to Japan and they didn't know how it would take. But it, it did all right, but the Japanese people, they like their own Japanese style where they get stuck into each other, you know. And I know your name's Marty Leglock Jones, right? So how did you, what made you choose the Leglock? Well, it's just one thing when I went to Calgary, they, we, we, we taught it, you know, as uh, Stu Hart and, and Brett and Owen and all them people did Leglocks all the time. But I did a different type of a Leglock. And um, it was good. You can ask Finley that, because they used to, the, only, the only move they used to beat him was, was, the, was the leg lock, you know? Uh, Big Daddy is a wrestler. Um, how good was he? Well, a lot of people don't, well, they won't remember this, but Big Daddy, he was in the Coldstream Guards. And his shoulders were like that, and his waist was like that, and he was a lifeguard at Blackpool Beach. And then, when I was 18, I, I live in Oldham, and he lived in Salby Bridge, which is a matter of 10 miles. So he said, come on down to the gym. So we used to what we call pull around together, you know? But he was very, very fit, even though he was a big man. Then he started putting his weight on. Then his brother made a... Um, Match country? Yeah. His brother made him into like a household name. Do you remember Shreddy Brick? Yeah, he came and trained with me. Yeah. Well, he, he, he was telling me about you. Um, you put him for a two-hour session. Um, how, how, how do you even like from the from the original? How do you, how do you um, train the sessions? As you're aware, I set off yesterday to come to Ireland, and we've had mega problems with the airline. I've been sat on my backside for ten hours today, not eating yet, but I had to come. So the seminar that I was doing, teaching only lasted half an hour, so I was very, very disappointed about it. So I've said to the boss, uh, Nathan, I'd like to come over again and possibly split it up 
Because when I saw the young kids doing what they had to do, they were some of the best kids I've seen. Uh, and what I would like to do is do like a novices young kids seminar right. first and then have some dinner and then come back and uh, do the seniors because you, by rights you've got to be 14 or over to do what they do but the enthusiasm and what I saw of all the kids here today but I'd like to teach them taking bumps you know what I mean and uh, it always standing in good stead because I think I know what I'm doing when it comes to seminars, you know. What was it, what was it like, uh, so remember so many years ago, as you know, um, Long Irish people were involved in World Sport Wrestling. Did you ever, what, what was it like coming over to Northern Ireland a few times? Yeah, like I say, me, me and uh, Finlay had a lot of feet together. So I went over to his backyard once at uh, Carrick Fergus. The first time I ever came over here, you won't remember this, I don't think you were born. Um, do you remember, or your dad will know, do you remember Mary Peters? Yeah. Well, she was an Irish Olympic gold medalist. Well, they did a, um, a running track and a sports centre. And I, the first time I came over, well, I'm telling lies really, because my mother's side are all from Bray. Delgany, Wicklow. So there's a lot of Irish in my family. When I was a school kid, uh, they used to put me on the Princess Maud, which is the old boat, on my own. And then they'd pick me up in Ireland. I'd spend all my school holidays over in Ireland. But going back to the wrestling, I did... Um, I went to Carrick Fergus a few times, did that, Mary Peters. And I've done quite a few one-off towns in Ireland. But... It's like anything else, airfares and hotels and all that, it's, it's getting difficult now. Cost of living crisis, you know what I mean? But the good thing about this tonight, it doesn't have to be packed, you know, thousands of people in. I'm going to ask you a question now. You seem to be knowing what you do. What's your favourite, WWE or AEW? WWE. Why? Because I know, I know AEW can... Uh, that's from Wembley. It was amazing, but I prefer WWE because it's always been there, um, and the, I think I would say they're more, more fluid. Listen, let me tell you, my opinion is WWE, with all the legends that's still hanging around, yeah. and you know I say William Regal. Did you? Yeah. The greatest British wrestler ever, William Regal. Oh, as sorry. As far as I want. <laughs> no, he, um, and he's gone back to WWE now. Is, is he? Yeah. He's left AEW, he's going back to the room. I can't wait to see that. Um, he's got, you know, a, a, a bigger job. Robbie Brookside. They're all British and they're all coaches of all the WWE stars. Johnny Shane? Can you say that? Johnny Shane comes to my gym every Sunday. Mm -hmm. Getting, you know, his career is finishing now. You won't mind me saying that, but it's. He's been a living legend and he's been his best mate, you know. Technical record, great technical record. But the, the good thing is, I'm not into all this where all the talent keeps running in on people's matches. That's what that AEW seems to do all the time, you know. Uh, uh, I'm sure you've heard about this, right? Yeah, I'm quite sad to be talking to you about this, but you've heard of Adrian Street, Dan, haven't you? Yeah, yeah. So, what, what way would you describe Adrian Street? What way? What way would you describe Adrian Street? Very, very. Don't forget, we're going back a long time. He was a very, very strong bodybuilder, and his dad was a coal miner. Right. right? And he worked down the pits and things like that. And he was wrestling, but he didn't seem to be getting anywhere. And he's a fantastic body on him. So he, he decided to have a bit of glamour into it. Right? And he did it that good, but he could wrestle as well. And he had some fantastic matches with Adrian Street because I was the young lad, you know, and he was there doing his muscles and doing all that. And then, it's like everybody else, he went to America, did okay. And then he came back and he was living down in Wales. And then it was a shock to us all, you know, when he, he passed away. But when we thought about it, 
he must have been 82, I think he was. So, you know, he, he had a good innings. As you know, the thing that upsets me is when people say wrestling's all fake. Oh, yeah. Right? The thing yeah, sorry is, about that. The, the thing that gets me, some of it, like they play at it, and you can see right through it. Yep. I told you, I've had three, I've seen the size of my knee. Yep. I've got three new knees in there, I've had not one, I've had three. And then that bag like there, see the size of it, I've got 17 screws in there. And that's the first time I got in the ring tonight for two and a half years. That's crazy. So really, it's, it's ruined my life as well. Yeah. But I'll, I'll never, I'll do it again, you know what I mean? But don't forget, I've travelled all over the world as well. It took me all over the place. How, but how are you going to do it? You've got I'm just waiting for operations again and getting oh. fit, you know. And I run a wrestling school over in Oldham and I train, train a lot of the NXT girls and things like that, getting them ready for the shows. Yeah. Like Shreddy Breck will tell you, he, he came to my gym a few times. He's been on the phone, he started working on his body and he's been very, very well with the bodybuilding. But I think he misses the wrestling, so he's trying to combine, <laughs> combine the two, you know. So see if you retired, like from wrestling, um, if, if you weren't coaching anyone, do you think NXT and WWE would be as good? Well, you know, I don't want to say who I've trained, but I've trained William Regal and um, Ridge Holland at the moment. He's, he's really good. He's one of my boys. Saxon Upsley, yep, Sam Gradwell, all of them come to my gym, so it keeps me active and a lot of new talent are coming through, so I have heard a rumour that NXT UK is going NXT Europe, but they've had so many things on, I've been talking to the people up above, they've got that much stuff going on, they had the castle in Wales, and then they've had this, they've had that, and they've had the other, and, and Raw, and Smackdown, and Wrestlemania. So when that all quietens down, they're going to start an NXT Europe, which I think will be good again. What's next for, uh, actually, I'll ask this one first. What advice would you give a young training like me? Like you? Yeah. Don't treat this. You're, how old are you? How old are you? What is it? How old are you? Um, 11. Right. So, when I started at 6... I started at 10. You know what someone said? Yeah. You started at 6. 6 year old. But I did amateur wrestling. Yeah. Like the Olympics. And there must be one or two clubs around here. But what I saw today, if Nathan starts running a kids club, right, don't treat it as though it's a bit of fun or a joke. Have fun! But it's serious, right? Keep watching the videos and I'll give you permission. Watch all my videos. All, all my matches are on YouTube. I know, I always watch them. Right? And you can just pick one move out and practice it and practice it. But don't... You've got to change your mindset sometimes. I know it's hard at your age and you want to play football or you want to do this. Or, yeah, I know, but you know what I mean? You want to go with your mates later on. And your dad will tell you when you get to about 15 or 16, right? Young girls come along and you hang around the street corner with all the lads and that. You've got to be dedicated to it. But you're doing the right thing at the moment. I was watching you. Just keep doing bits and bats like that. Right, and then start what I'm going to do if I do come back here because you've got to have a word with Nathan. Mm -hmm. I'll give you a few exercises that you can do at home, dead easy. All right, thank you. You've got you've got stairs at your house, yeah, yeah. right? Just stand at the bottom of the stairs, one foot on, two foot on, one foot off, one foot off, and count 30 on each leg, and then sit on the stairs or sit on a chair and keep throwing your legs out like that. You know what I mean? And then when you get older and your dad will let you go early mornings before school even, right? Just go for a walk yeah. around the block before you go to school. And your sports and all that will come because your fitness will be better with you. Don't smoke. That's all. I've never smoked, never ever smoked, right? I'm making up for it now drinking beer. <laughs> you know what I mean? But all that comes. And it, this wrestling business, 
is a great business. But, like I said, I was very, very lucky. I went to Me Mexico when I was 17. I'd only just come out of the amateurs, but because I had a good trainer, Billy Robinson, they thought, oh, he must be good. But when I got there, I had to show me metal, you know, I was good. And um, that was tough. When I went to Mexico for the first time, you like wrestling in 80, 90, 100, degree, 100 degrees. But it's all, I do it all again, even though I'm suffering now. Anyway, you man, you're a joy to talk to. Right? You're doing a good interview. And I to say, get into me, Nathan, and uh, say, I want to do a seminar with Marty. Right? And hopefully I'll come next time. It's not the last time I'm going to be Thank here. You, Pleasure. Have a good one. Thank you. Hi, Lucky Am I. What an absolute legend. Don't forget to like, subscribe, and share. And complete. I'll see you again next time. Bye for now.